Good evening everybody and welcome to the studio tonight. On tonight's episode, <laughs> can I be doing some more of this lion? He is getting closer to being completed now. Uh, with some more shading basically to do, but other than that, his jaw, side of his face there, do need to uh, to add a little bit of uh, colouring to that. So, to use another catchphrase, let's heat him up. Basically, just going to be adding more and more fur around this area here to make it darker. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Now, as I said before, this really just is lots and lots and lots of lines. Now, I'm not exactly drawing in every single hair, but we are drawing quite a lot of representative hairs. This particular section here has kind of been underpainted, um, so there's a, a slightly yeah, darkened area was laid down before I started putting the lines over the top of it. Uh, but I still want to put the lines over the top of it because this, they show up over the top and uh, it blends the areas all around it together. To, well not to do two things one is start and finish each um, uh, stroke pen stroke in the uh, same place because that way you create effectively create a line because you start and end in the same place visually it looks like there's a, a line being created and uh, the second thing I'm trying really hard not to do is when I put the pen down or when I lift it off, not to stop. That creates a little dark blob, which I am trying to avoid. So I have to make sure that as I do this, the pen is moving before I touch it down on the wood. And it's still moving when I lift it off. 
bit like an aircraft landing and taking off again. There's quite a lot of fireworks going off around here tonight. There's been almost a uh, continuous sound of rockets and mortars or whatever they are these days for about the last two to three hours. I think if we lived near the top of a hill rather than down in a valley we'd probably get an extremely good fireworks show for free. Just need to look out of the window and there you go. I'm not hearing music as this silly program stopped again. I hate groove music. It is extremely unreliable to say the least. He does not like it if it is not the primary focus, if it's not the focus app, doesn't like it. It's probably because you can't see the advert then, that's on the screen. So I can't sell you extra things. I can see, especially from the uh, the stream, that um, this area here is rather light. It wants to be darker. A lot of the back of the line is in deep shadow, so I want to darken this area off, at least to match some of that, and then darken this a little bit more as well. This is meant to be a really solid dark shadow, and therefore this area needs to be a little bit closer to it. Captain Doby, good evening and welcome. And how are you enjoying your weekend? It's not been particularly boring here, it's been a busy day and uh, glad that you're uh, good. Uh, I'm well at the moment. <laughs> I am developing a sore throat, so, uh, which could mean I'm just getting a sore throat or it could mean I'm getting a cold or yeah, 
some sort of uh, virus. But for the moment, I am not too bad. Thank you very much. What I will need to keep doing though is making sure I keep having a drink. Okay, this is starting to darken off now, so mm, we're getting there. <laughs> well, I would have would hope that they hadn't been doing the rounds around me, to be honest, Captain Derby, but uh, sometimes it can't be avoided. Uh, anytime you're around people and yeah it's uh, that's one thing our people are kind of hard to avoid so one of those things you end up having to put up with Sounds uh Is that what you think um now what you think it's gonna be, um Captain Derby? Steve Ross doing uh, life painting? Could be. I mean it, it, the create well okay. I, they created the stream and they they enabled subscriptions on it. And it's kind of like if all the you know if everybody was paying for a subscription just for eight days, it kind of like you expect them to get something more. So yes, that's true. You did indeed. Um, I could see if there wasn't anything else there'd be a lot of people saying please can I have my subscription money back
you do do you uh, is to keep everybody in suspense free <laughs> or do you mean you really do know what it's for good evening and welcome <laughs> okay. Well, could be interesting. You see, you did do a half decent picture. <laughs> now then are you just letting uh, Captain Doby down lightly there for a year? <laughs> Ah, uh, okay. I guess I really ought to read that uh, forum at some point, but... I'm kind of not really a person for doing that sort of thing. I used to actually read and participate in a lot of forums over uh, over the years, but as I started doing more of this sort of stuff, I've kind of just stopped doing all of that. Jacob McSweeney, um, so do I. Thank you very much for the uh, the comment. That's uh, nice of you. Welcome to the studio this evening.
Okay, Fee. I, I've not actually joined. I've read it as a visitor a few times, but... Okay. Uh, this is starting to... Uh, the, the darker areas are starting to blend towards each other now. So, it's still a little bit blocky. Uh, around here, and I need to do a little bit more at the top, which is still, uh, you know, there's, there's kind of a, it suddenly starts there. In actual fact, it probably wants to sort of come across here. It, this is obviously, well, not obviously, but it is shadow. So I need to sort of um, <coughs> just bring it across a little bit. Possibly darken these a little bit. They they don't need much, but just to help them stand out a bit. Which coincidentally is the one place that I don't read. <laughs> it's Reddit. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually been on there. You could almost say that Reddit is the one place I've never read it. <laughs> Sorry, it just came to me. Um, I never go on places like that, generally speaking, when I'm actually looking for something in particular. Um, yeah, you know, I say ready, but forums in general, you know, something doesn't work, I'm trying to fix it, or trying to work out how something works, and you know, looking for somebody else that's done something similar. That's about the only time I start reading, yeah, reading forums and, and sources like that. I don't know, maybe it's, um, maybe it's the artist, the visual bit, but I, you know, tend these days more to watch the video style stuff than, uh, than read up. <laughs> Is this seriously live? Yeah, I reckon I'm live. Or near live. Close enough, anyway. And of course, the fact that I've just replied, you just replied to yourself, um, probably suggests that I am. Either or it's a very good computer animation. But good evening and welcome to the stream.
Well, if you don't want to talk to me, Ultimate uh, Tipper, that's quite all right. If you're not sure, you're quite welcome to go look back at uh, the the uh, recorded video. You'll see it start from a blank sheet of uh, wood all the way to as it is now. Unfortunately, possibly Lady Zara also has a cold. She's not very good, but... Uh of course, that could be where I've got it from as well, but... Mm. <laughs> Reedy Bloke says, bless you. Thank you. To which Lady Zara says, thank you. Tone is coming here now. I'm, I'm, I'm liking that tone quite a bit. I'm not fantastically happy with the um, the texture that's being arrived at here. Um, it's not quite the main. The main even on a well-groomed lion, or same with hair on a cat, even a well-groomed cat. It's not perfectly flat and smooth, and and on a on a sh shaggy head, or a long haired cat, uh, of which obviously a lion is somewhat of a long haired cat. It forms like clump, clumps or, or sort of. That suggests like like dirty, but I don't mean that. I mean it just sort of bunches up a little bit, uh, and you get sort of light and dark areas. I'm not getting that yet. I'm, I have to see if I can do it because it looks a bit flat. It looks like somebody sat there for hours brushing this lion's mane, uh, and and at the moment it looks perfectly flat. But we will uh, we'll have a go. I am sort of now that it's getting a sort of closer to the colours. Um, but as it stands at the moment. It, it very much looks like if the the lion's head obviously goes backwards in you know that way. It kind of looks like this is stuck out at right angles. So it does certainly need to go a lot darker and push it so it, it pushes the angle uh, that way. So certainly this edge has to go a lot darker which will then push it that way or it'll give your eyes the impression of it, it being tilted that way and then hopefully it'll look a bit better as well. Yeah, I was thinking about that as well, Fee. I was trying to think of the techniques that I'd, I'd use. And I, I think with an airbrush, probably what I'd have done... Ultimate Tiba, or Tiba, thank you very much for uh, following. It's very kind of you. I think with the airbrush, Fee, what I'd probably have done is... Um, gone for sort of medium thickness lines. Um, probably gone with a, um, a, a underpainted it to start with, uh, and then perhaps gone with some transparent sort of you know colour, whatever monochrome or whatever white, um, white and dark, white and black, and sort of build up so sort of about a quarter of an inch line, you know, quarter of an inch lines, but not hard lines. So let let it sort of tail off, and then of course in, in doing that when you go over the edges being trans it'll you'll get sort of darker and lighter stripes and I think that that would probably have worked the the um, 
Chirography half works like that, um, but it sort of doesn't quite. Uh, quite often the pyrography acts very much like you've got a capped colour. Unless you really slow down and then you've got to be careful for burns uh, occurring elsewhere. Um, uh, well, a couple of things in respect to that Ultima Tipper. Um, one thing is, it's against Twitch terms and conditions. But mm, I don't actually mind. The, um, uh, but before I answer, what, what what does age matter? Well, I'm quite happy to, to sort of give you an indication, but um, I'm just wondering why, why, why you're asking. Um, yeah, interestingly, uh, one of the things with electronic painting electronic art one of the things that happen that you will often do is sort of effectively large bristles you know three or four just bristles on a brush but of course because you're doing it electronically you can do lots of them but um <laughs> uh, i i just interested why i mean it's there's 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 some people how long have i been drawing um, now that kind of makes sense in terms of asking that sort of thing. Um, okay, no, it's, a, it's all right. I mean, I wasn't, uh, you know, I'm not that bothered. I'm not hiding the fact. I mean, I am over 50 years old, so I have been drawing. I started drawing way, way back when I was at school in... In the UK, that would have been junior school. No, infant school, but principally junior school. So that would have been around about the age of 10. Once I left to go to senior school, I effectively stopped drawing. I, I sort of did the odd drawing, but stopped out altogether until about five. I've always been creative, like model making, um, programming, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, art-wise, I came back into doing this about five years ago. And uh, now it's okay, Ultima. I, I wasn't uh, upset by it. <laughs> um, there are some people um, that seem, shall we say, that um, seem to think that um, the younger you are, the better. But of course drawing of art often comes better with age because of the experience and the practice so um no problem uh, no problem with that i'm just interested in why people uh, want to, to know that was all uh, and i can actually then better answer your question so uh, i've taught myself to do all of this stuff uh, in about the past uh, five years uh, all of the art forms that i do um, I started about five years ago airbrushing, uh, effectively for the first time, and uh, and just carried on from there. With uh, with pyrography came next, and then one or two other art crafts as well. Uh, Fuffy Twiggler, brilliant! Yeah, now you know how he got out of the having a missile fired at the plane. Um, Good evening. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ultima Tiba. Ultimate, uh, Ultima, Ultimate Tiba. Um, I, I mm, sort of because I've sort of because this is sort of light drawing. Um, it, it's probably not a. You know, it sounds more impressive that I've only done this for five years, but um, a lot of the techniques that are, are being used here. Are similar to pencil drawing they're also similar to airbrushing which is something I've been doing longer than I've been doing the pyrography so um, oh you could just say I'm naturally talented <laughs> I also well uh, I'm not particularly modest <laughs> uh, 
a fluffy twiglet. Well, I shall probably watch it after the stream tonight, unless um, 3D Blow decides he's going to uh, to stream Soma. Which reminds me, fluffy twiglet. I have some twiglets, that is. Bought some today. They're not fluffy, though. Actually, talk you buying things. I have been buying things today. I didn't want to buy things today, but I kind of did. Is that? No, it is. So I am. Um, I bought something to do some some more pyrography on. So I was kind of thinking of doing like a forest background and on here. Maybe a little log cabin. Something like that. Uh, I may be doing the same on the other side, but nighttime wise. I've been playing. Uh, Yes, I, I have I have twiglets. Look, and luckily, should I say, Lady Zara doesn't like twiglets. Doesn't mind you, but doesn't like twiglets. So I get them all to myself. Um, I've got some uh, some pretty hearts for. Uh, for a commission this is. I'm going to have some um, pet names uh, written around it so I'll be writing at some point. Yep indeed Christmas decorations. So I've got a, I also got a different reindeer. Not quite sure what to do on that but we shall see. And just just for fun, <laughs> uh, I've got a um, one that sort of resembles well my present. So uh, I don't know quite what to do with that either yet. Possibly do sort of a I don't know Christmas tree with some presents underneath, something like that. And I also picked up some more of these little plaques, so I might do some more trees or, I don't know, something else on those. I won't get them all out, but I also bought some, um, some beads as well. So we'll, uh, these are a different style to the ones I was using before. I just thought I'd have a play with some different style beads, um, but again, I've got a I've got a bracelet to make. Um, what I intend to try and do on the bracelet is make um, poppies. You know, the the, the hmm. I might have to change it a little bit, but the, you know, the poppy with the black centre and, and a couple of leaves uh, for for sort of a remembrance type bracelet. Um haven't decided yet what the background's going to be, so it might be blue, it might be gold, might be both, dunno. <laughs> yes, I just realised as well I did get some nice big round things to do some pyrography on, so looks like we might be doing pyrography for a while. <laughs> I thought of a bit of carving. Not sure yet, um, but uh, got plenty of things to have a go at. I might even get some of them, might even manage to get some of them on the shop. Ah, it's a pity, uh, free. Guess I'll be watching Doctor Who tonight then.
Okay, now let's see if we can get this back back end to go dark enough to um, to push back into the background um, and look somewhat the right shape. Going to try though in doing this to um, to maintain very fine lines because if if it goes too well if it goes too thick uh, and holding the pen to actually sort of pressing it down if you like onto the wood would make it go too thick um, it changes the look of the texture I mean if you look up here. On screen that sort of works, but here it kind of looks wrong because there's there's a there's missing texture in that area. It's sort of flat, and it just sits there in the middle of, of a lot of hairs. It doesn't look quite right, but um, scrubbing canvas uh, that suggests that you um, you've decided to uh, to redo your. Um, Yeah, Bob Ross. You you're quite enjoying the um, the oil stuff these days, aren't you, Fred? I kind of got the impression that you've been rather surprised by a what you've managed to achieve using it, and and b it sort of is giving you a lot of inspiration. Last night you were you know you were mentioning it quite a few times how you thought you'd probably do. Do the Technics turntable a lot better with oil. Yes, I do know I was mentioned on my own channel. It does make sense. Thank you very much. Oh, wow, that is quite a big uh, a big change for you. It, mind you, yes, you kind of mentioned that last night, didn't you? It's, it's that big a difference? Or is it the fact that there's a hell of a lot to learn? That's the fun bit, learning, uh, learning all the new stuff. It sort of makes sense in a way though, doesn't it? Um, I mean, to put it to put it in a daft way, I guess oils are lubricants, so it kind of would sort of spread further. Uh, acrylic being water-based will evaporate off a lot quicker, and and you've um, 
you suddenly hit a dry edge. So it sort of makes sense. Maybe water's a lubricant as well, so. <laughs> it's um I think we both mentioned it. <laughs> the, 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 that just crossed my mind there. Is I can, uh, I've, somewhere I've got, and I've had it thirty odd years at least. Um, uh, a set uh, of uh, small tubes of oil paint. I mean, literally they're that size. You know, the, uh, about an inch tall. A whole range of colours. <laughs> it's kind of like. Um, the impression I got when you were doing the um, the work and and obviously from Bob Ross is, you know, that you could get a P-shaped dab of paint and probably use that for the whole of the canvas. Yeah. I wonder, do they, I mean, you, they're, they're, diff, they're different techniques, or, or in some ways, the um, acrylic, acrylic and oil sort of have different techniques, but I'm, you know, the, the, for example, oil seems to have a lot of knife work, um, whereas acrylic doesn't seem to, don't, you don't see that very often, shall I say. But I'm kind of wondering just how different they truly are and whether you could use, ex you know, notwithstanding the fact that you need more paint, whether you could actually just treat the two more or less as the same thing and, and just you know, you use the techniques rather than worry about what the paint is. Yeah, you might have to make some adjustments uh, because of the, you know, the spreadability. Uh, and unless you're going, as you were on about last night, unless you're going for, for impasto style thick paint, then as long as you're keeping sort of to thin layers, then because um, acrylic, a lot of acrylic stuff I see used tends to get used like water, um, watercolor, really thin down. So it's really liquid as opposed to um, gel, as it comes out of the tube type of stuff. I mean, a lot of a lot of oil paint seems to be used almost as it comes as it comes out of the tube. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So no, I'm not um, no experience at all. Uh, free, I've never done um, uh, any bush uh, acrylic bush work. Well, to be 100% honest, I've done the odd line on, a, on an airbrush painting, which strictly speaking is acrylic paint. Therefore, I've done some bush work, but effectively, no, I've never I've never done any bush work on acrylic. Or oil, for that matter. I am looking forward to having the now. I mean, watched you do it. Um, okay, I've never done any bush work, but having watched you do it and what you were talking about at the time, I am quite looking forward to having it. Oh, Rihanna Dewitt. Hello, welcome, and good evening. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I, it is a little bit. There's a little bit sort of snobbishness about about it, isn't it? <laughs> you know, if you're not painting in oils, you're not really painting. Yeah, right. Welcome back, Rihanna DeWitt. It's been a little while since we've seen you, but um, that's not a criticism, by the way. That's just an observation. I trust you are OK. How am I today? Unfortunately, I think I'm getting... Well, I'm getting a sore throat. Which may be the sign of me getting a cold. I hope not. 
and I really hope it's not a sign of me getting flu because I've had a flu vaccination so I hope that works me and flu do not get on well it's not that I end up laid up in bed or anything well not not from the flu but I do have a tendency to catch pneumonia um, yes well I can understand that I mean lin linseed oil smells nice or if they use some of the other oils um, trying to think which one it is now it's not rapeseed oil uh, but some of the other oils have a really um, really nice smell natural oils so I can understand that well, it's a, it's similar I'm gonna say it's a similar thing with airbrush paints come out smells terrible uh, and yet uh, private stock um, the color cow stuff smells absolutely smells like you could eat the stuff live liquid <laughs> Which is interesting when we're talking about paint. Good evening, welcome to the studio this evening. <laughs> that was an, in an interesting uh, joining point there, Live Liquid. <laughs> yeah, a little careful with the language there, Live Liquid. <laughs> I appreciate your enthusiasm but uh, <laughs> thank you but there's no need to, there's no need for profanity yeah, yeah. yeah. just saying it's nice is uh, is good enough thank you <laughs> ETAC, yes. Uh, private stock is ETAC, uh, uh, colour cows. I couldn't remember the, the name. Marzipan? <coughs> yeah, probably on the way to it. It is sort of an almondish smell of some kind. Not, not exactly marzipan, but it, it's of that sort of style of smell, and it, it is really quite a pleasant smell. So I don't. It, it it's um, as I say, it almost literally is the sort of smell that if it was food, you'd quite like to eat it, you know. And uh, I've never been tempted to taste it though, but. <laughs> It is, it is one of the reasons why I do use, um, or I, I have a, I have a stock of Etac paint. It, it, it's it's really nice paint to, sp or I found it really nice paint to spray. I mean, every, everybody has their own favourites, and uh, I found Etac to be mine. Um, unfortunately, it's not that easy to get hold of in the UK. Uh, but one of the other reasons is it does smell nice, so I don't get. Um, 
I don't get complaints from Lady Zara about uh, about uh, airbrushing in the house. See if we can see if we can generate something that sort of looks like that bunching effect. Let's just try running a few uh, hairlines quite close to each other. as long as I watch the highlights as well <laughs> yeah, I remember that oh dear yeah I can't, I can't remember the formula but uh, I do remember the yeah uh, um, that particular string when you mixed it time for reducer though I just well, well thinner I just uh, I just use uh, deionized water so and I, I've never really had any problems uh, spraying with um, with it in fact I've used tap water from time to time mind you the, the, I guess um, up here in Yorkshire we've got hard water so we don't get um, so sort of don't get limestone particles in it like elsewhere in the country so uh, it, it doesn't tend to uh, to clog up the bushes. Oh, the, yeah, the glycerine. Yeah, the glycerine is the, the, the important bit. <laughs> yeah. it, it's odd in a way, isn't it? You, you mix glycerine, which is an oil, with windoline, which is a degreaser. <laughs> it kind of makes you wonder if they're there just to neutralise each other so that the... Um, the deionized water is the bit that does the work. Yeah, I understand you men drops. <laughs> I shall make a note of that. I'll put it on a notepad somewhere uh, on the system and. Uh... I, I, I do use. Um... Well, I did use also. Uh, tended to use a couple of drops of uh, 411 reducer in there <laughs> yeah weird uh, I, I can't I kind of work out how it works though um, you are sort of making um, a molecular chain up because what you're probably getting is the paint is is bonding to the water the water is bonding to the windoline and the windoline is bonding to the glycerin and then the sort of so you've sort of got 
paint with glycerin on the outside through the chain and um, the glycerin being um, a lubricant it is lubricating the path through the brush and being an oil it doesn't evaporate quite as quickly and, as, and the water is then bond is is chemically bonded so sort of chemically bonded so it doesn't evaporate off very quickly either so I can kind of understand the chain that's going on there but uh, yeah I'm going to say I use for, for, uh, do use for, for a 4011 reducer which is which has got some alcohol in it um, which would tend to make it a fast um, fast dry but I don't it uh, I just generally use it like a couple of drops and then uh, do the rest with uh, deionized water and I don't seem to have um, I didn't see I'll say didn't it's been a while now since I've done any Maybe, well, just thinking then, um, I, I was a little, a couple of days ago, I was thinking, what what, what am I going to do after I finish this? Whether I do some more pyrography or maybe I did some carving. And I was thinking, what what on earth was I going to carve? And I thought, well, actually, I'm looking at a lion. Why not carve the lion? And then, um, just then, as you were thinking about that, I was thinking, the, the problem I have with airbrushing is always, like any art form, is what on earth do I do? <laughs> I'm looking at lion. <laughs> Why not have a? Do I really want to do that many dagger strokes? And uh, do I really want to do more hair? But mm. yeah, it is expensive. I don't. I don't fantastically go through a great deal of it though. When you're only mixing one or two drops, um, I did count it into one of those little bottles. Uh, when you when you're going th just one or two drops, though, I, I uh, I've had I had two big two big bottles that I got when um, when I first started, and uh, I, I I haven't actually I didn't actually finish the first bottle. It's evaporated now, so that I have if you like, but that's just through lack of use. The other bottle's still full. So um, I, I don't go through it a great deal. It, I, it sort of is just the 4011 seems to help quite a lot with tip dry. Um, so, I, but I don't, as you say, I don't use it as the main main, main reducer. I do just use um, uh, the the water. remember when you was making that for some reason every time you said glycerin the thing that kept coming to my mind was nitroglycerin <laughs> and I'm thinking a couple of drops of nitroglycerin <laughs> yeah it, it is kind of it doesn't work that way around this isn't it isn't a video conference um, I haven't got. Have I got a bottle now? Yeah, I have. Actually, this one's um, this one's sealed and it's evaporating slightly because you can see the um, the bottle is um, is um, shrinky a little bit. But that's uh, I, I've had that five years. And and this one still it's still it's still sealed. It's got the red cap on it. I know you can get bigger ones than this. Um, but I what I I spread the I spread the computer case 
um, mud on, you know, full background, and then the uh, the fish on top of it. And I've done about twenty or three pictures. Um, not as many as you've done, uh, and I've done it on paper rather than canvas. Um, but um, I, I've sort of I sort of used about two thirds of the other bottle, and then the the last third just evaporated away. No, it's not. It's not quite marzipan. It's a slightly more rubbery smell. I wouldn't do that with uh, with come out though. <laughs> it stinks. Um, from <laughs> you kind of you kind of do in a way it, it is real weird how, how things get um, into your brain like that I've, I've mentioned before I'm a radio amateur and uh, one of the things I have to be very careful of especially with a handheld microphone is it, it, uh, we have Tannoys that we had where I was working, we had tannoys, and I, every time I picked up the tannoy mic, one of the things I had to be very, very careful of is because as radio amateurs, one of the things you always do as you, as you start transmitting and when you finish transmitting is you transmit your call sign for identification purposes. And every time I pick up the, picked up the tannoy microphone, I had to be very careful, and, and sometimes I didn't, <laughs> sometimes I forgot because uh, it, it's so ingrained not to say my call sign to a whole big building of people um, it's not so bad with with the the handheld mic here because um, I don't handhold it but it's um, that, that's it's a slightly different style of working and uh, and I'm a bit out of that now but uh, it's still uh, it, it is if I pick up a handheld microphone I have to be very careful uh, a fist, well, you know, it's what do they call them? They usually call them fist mics, but it's um, it's a microphone that fits in your hand, flat face with a toggle switch on the side to actually tran uh, transmit, talk, whatever, push to talk. <laughs> so I can kind of understand him oh, doing that. I'm going as far as turning to a camera and yeah. And you're there again. I guess he must have still had a sub alert going of some kind. You see, that's dedication for you. Having a sub alert when you're not uh, when you're not broadcasting and. Uh, uh, and and at least trying to thank the uh, subscriber. Yeah. Right, as this darkens down, it's pushing backwards a little bit. Um, I think uh, what I'm going to do is sort of shade backwards, probably from here, backwards, because this is sort of you know the neck area. So it, um, I don't really want to. Well, there is a bit of a highlight there, I guess, because of just the way the fur will, the way the fur sort of is thicker slightly further back. Ah, uh, yeah. That's just 
break these up a little bit if I can. Let's make, let's put a, a darker area through the middle. Just break up that into more of a highlight than. It's quite a wide sort of patch. So if we. Um, we split it up a little bit and give it more of a highlight look. Uh, and actually, we'll probably start trying to insert some of the um, some of the bunching type effects, or at least some of the dark spots that you'll get from it. Because it's obviously now the only way I've got of creating highlights is not to make it dark. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that you don't do it more often uh, when, you, when you're talking, uh, uh, talking to the microphone. I used to, for a while, um, used to freak people out when I was driving because... Um, I've passed an advanced driving test. I, I did it quite a long time ago. I probably should do some more practice. But one of the um, one of the te techniques that you, you or were taught for advanced driving was commentary. It's what police drivers do, and um, when you uh, when you're learning advanced driving, it um, it tells your instructor your thought process, where you're looking, what you're looking at, what your understanding of the situation is and everything like that. And uh, that's something that you kind of also you know, get into a habit of doing. Uh, and, and I used to, used to practice, of course, and driving by myself, I'd be giving a commentary all the time. And then sort of driving somewhere with work with a colleague in the car and I'm still giving a commentary. <laughs> Um, they tended to get used to me though. Uh, at least, at least one one bloke sort of said, "Well, at least I feel I can go to sleep in the car with you." And it's kind of like, I like it when people sleep in the car. But anyway, uh, because uh, you're seeing things that I didn't even know were there. Because the commentary, I'm sort of going, "And there is an." Mm, uh, yeah, I do. Well, I, 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 uh, when I'm driving the car, I always do a shoulder check before I pull out. I don't ever rely on the mirror. And um, that kind of surprises a lot of people as well. Because you, um, a blind spot check more than anything it is, but um, I always look over my shoulder. And... And it's sort of it, uh, walking sometimes is kind of like driving. I, I do the same things as when I'm driving slowly. It's, it's the same observational thing, you know. Um, going down, you, you're walking and you stop because you know somebody's just about to step in front of you, <laughs> and they do. It. Um, I have more than ones that are just because you know, ladies Zara and I walking down the road, holding you know, holding hands, and I'll just. Stop and stop and moving. That's because somebody's just about to walk in front of us. It's weird. Just saw someone on Twitch dying a dog blue. Hmm. Poor dog. Is all I can say. Why blue? 
Me, I know you've got the blue men group, but dogs? Blue dog group? No, oh, yeah, no. Hmm. Cannot see the point in dying a dog blue. Well, takes all sorts. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that one for me. And it's kind of it's kind of weird because, of course, with cars, that's what they teach you to use as your primary mirror. But of course, you don't need to do it. You, if you got you've got good wing mirrors, you and you've got good situational awareness, you don't need it. But as a driving instructor, of course, that's a completely different thing. <laughs> and you, my next door neighbour, where it went. Before I got married, my next door neighbour was a driving instructor. Um, I, shall we say, when he's not instructing, his driving is not quite the same. Uh, now, you'll have to wait until you see the dog dyed red, uh, 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 free, before you've seen it all. Come on there, fluffy twiglet. Why were they? I'll ask. Why were they dyeing the dog blue? Was this some sort of cosplay? Because I, I can't really see much creative about dyeing a dog blue. Unless you were going to dye sort of green trees and things on the dog. Sort of. A dog, a dog groomer. That's the story. Mm. Yeah, well. A fluff. Oh, a white. Why would you want a white puppy blue? Yeah, but boss dog, that was what I was thinking of for me. Uh, yeah, white, white and puppy. Yeah, no. I can't, I can't see that. Well, as you say, I can't see that having had a good... Uh, I mean, the dog doesn't mind. You know, that's... Um, as, as long as it's a dog that didn't mind sort of being handled and groomed and things, but uh, it didn't mind being, you know, it almost certainly doesn't mind being blue, but um, can't understand why the owner would want a blue dog. I mean, I know you'll, you'll sometimes get I can uh, I won't say show animal because I don't do it with show animals, but um, you know you might have a I don't know uh, I'm trying to think of the, the there are some dogs that have got a silver blue coat and you might sort of you know sort of enhance that colour shall I say but <laughs> yeah, it's blue well uh, I guess. At least if it's running in a park, you can tell which is your dog, because it's blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They always did, didn't they, for me? look like ornamental hedges. Yeah, little pom-poms on the feet and the legs and... Yeah. Now, I never understood that with... Um, I was just about to say, I wonder how long it is before somebody to, to, uh, puts the Twitch logo on the side of a dog or something, with either with dye or by uh, you know, trimming the hair. Nakmui, good evening and welcome back. Uh, welcome to the channel where the discussion of blue dogs 
isn't the most unusual thing that goes on. <laughs> Give them ideas. Yeah, well. If, some, if somebody's going to die a dog blow, I don't think they need to be given ideas. I don't actually know the answer to that, uh, Nakamui. Um, let's have a look. I look at the video manager and I look at how many broadcasts I've been on. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. So we've got about uh, 23 and a half hours on this at the moment, uh, Nakamui. Uh, something, of, something on an A4 bot seems to take about 30 so we've probably got a little bit further to go yet but uh, and indeed we have got a little bit further to go so um, yeah it does seem to does seem to average at about 30 hours uh, and that that just seems to be irrespective of what the um, what the content is so what's the price of this um, Ultimate t bear good evening, Majest the Majestic Lion indeed. So what's the price for this piece of van? Don't actually know, uh, Nakamo. It's, it's, it's a really hard thing to, um, to price. I mean, okay, um, I, I say 30 hours, of course, I'm talking, I'm not doing this. So uh, I think um, I, I just recently time-lapsed um, something else that I did. I'll do a time-lapse. I can't remember. Um, there was, uh, um, for that, there was 24 hours of um, actual tape, time lapsed down in, uh, time lapsed. Eventually, I cut out all the, you know, not doing things before I, before I did the time lapse. It came down to about 12 hours, and that's so 50% talking, 50% doing. So, this is going to be, you know, let's say about 15 hours. So uh, it's kind of pricing wise, it's probably gonna mm, mm, don't, don't really know. Probably somewhere in the order of about 150 pounds for something like this for the amount of work that's gone into it. Oh, I see. Sorry, uh, Ultimate Tiba. Okay, I'll um, I'll take a look at some point. I don't mind. Um, I do not mind instrumental music. Quite uh, quite like it. I mean, this is um, this is really there as um, partially as a background, and uh, it gives me a chance not to talk from time to time. Yeah. 
Yeah, those odd dark areas are not looking too bad actually. Might just see if I can extend them a little bit. He's got quite um, quite an intent sort of gaze, I think. Uh, I don't know about fierce, but it is sort of uh, really, or, or to my mind, it's really quite a strong, um, determined type of um, look. Uh, It's, it's not quite food, <laughs> but uh, there is something sort of intense about it. That still isn't quite at the right angle. I think I've still got to I've got to dark this off a bit more. It's still not quite um, still not quite there. Fireworks have started up again. One of the um, pen tips I have seen in theory for doing things like fur and actually feathers as well is a tip that looks like a coil of wire um, where you sort of can do multiple, basically multiple strokes at the same time. Or, or, you know, it's like having loads of these side by side. Kind of wonder whether it, whether it'd work or whether you need so much control in doing it that um, it just wouldn't make it uh, worthwhile and be quicker to use single tips. Uh, could I make a Star Wars thingy? <laughs> I could. Are there any Star Wars trains? Um, <laughs> what sort of Star Wars thingy, um, Nakamui? Um, why are people lighting fireworks? Um, yeah, UK wise, uh, Ultimate Tiber is that um, November the fifth um, in the UK is a day is a day that celebrates when somebody tried to blow up Parliament. Guy Fawkes uh, in some period in the past. I can't remember when he was alive. Uh, it's known as the Gunpowder Plot, and um, he uh, quite 
Well, uh, at, uh, in that era, you could rent uh, space under the Houses of Parliament in the UK. You could rent cellars. Uh, he rented a cellar, packed it full of gunpowder, um, and intended to blow it up on... I can't remember if it was November the 5th or the 6th, but um, intended to blow it up, thus destroying Parliament, and um, doing effecting polit political change, basically. He got caught. But um, that's where sort of the um, the celebration comes from. I don't know whether they're celebrating him getting caught or not, but they let uh, use gunpowder to let off, which is fireworks basically, to uh, as a celebration around the fifth. Um, but people being people, they'll do it on the third, the fourth, the fifth, and generally speaking, um, whatever's the Friday and Saturday after after the 5th because of course Friday night and Saturday night <laughs> yes yeah, so your stories last night for me Yes, and I, I quite I quite like the story of sort of uh, you know after five years finding this UXB <laughs> just lying around somebody's house. Uh. Yeah, and Free's friend definitely does stupid things with them. Um. And actually, ever since that um, that episode, um, they stopped renting. Not surprisingly, they stopped renting out the cellars, and kicked everybody out. And it's uh, it's been sort of private ever since then. <laughs> Are these people trying to blow things up have a, uh, um, do put a stop to a lot of things that are fun to do otherwise. I don't mean destroying parliaments, but... Um. Actually, I can't remember if it's the House of Commons or the House of Lords that he tried to blow up, but... Um, or whether it was both. Uh, my... My memory of his... My mem I wasn't around then. My memory of the history lessons where that was taught uh, doesn't stretch enough to to, to to remind me quite what uh, political change he was trying to trying to get. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that for a feature wheel. I was not going to say that. And I was just thinking, in America, of course, it's the 4th of July, isn't it, when, when there's a lot of fireworks go off. Um, and around 3D Blokes Friends, it's just because. I live in a valley, uh, quite a, uh, relatively speaking, quite a narrow valley, and the, the one side of it is quite close behind us. And there's been quite a lot of those big um, airborne explosions going off that either 
burst the flowers or just go with a bang and um, because we're in a valley it reverberates off both sides and uh, and sort of runs up and down the valley so we, we it, it gets quite loud out there and it, it actually doesn't have to make you jump sometimes <laughs> uh, the thought never crossed my mind Fuffy Twiggler until you said it I mean it crossed my mind about me which is why I clarified what I actually meant but hmm. it's a problem with good explosions though for you you can't see them they're too fast you have to make do with bad ones like fireworks because they're slower I got surprised watching uh, quite a few discovery programs, discovery channel in the UK, uh, on things like uh, you know, these people that go around you know, blowing down buildings and, and towers and things. And it kind of, it just really kind of surprised me how um, fast explosions are. And, and not only that, how they choose, um, you know, they'll, they'll choose the explosion, the explosive material by how fast they want it to propagate. And, and it, it, there's some of the explosive materials, and I'll make this up because I really can't remember, but, it, but some of the explosions do something like 4,000 miles per second. And I'm totally making it up, but some really numbers that make, you know, numbers that sort of make you just look at it and go wow you know um, and then um, things like detonator card which which actually has gunpowder in it because it's slow and they want it to be slow and that sort of travels its feet per second and yet you know the big the bangs are sort of you know really ridiculous numbers <laughs> Yeah, good one, Faye. Good one. Yeah. The idea is that they shouldn't go bang. It is, yeah, that's right. It is. Um, it, it's the moving air. Uh, and, um, I mean, things like the shaped charges, you know, a, a cone shaped piece of metal behind uh, with the explosive in it the metal cone gets completely destroyed but it t uh, before it does it channels much of the power forward and it, it's like um you can you, you so uh, okay demonstrations of on the side of a building shape charge city off and there's a a neat hole cut in the side of the building that you might expect and then they, you know, they, they take the camera and look into the hole. You can see a hole in the wall at the other side of the room and a hole in the wall at the other side of that room. <laughs> and you keep seeing these holes. And it's just one thing has just punched all the way through. Absolutely fascinating. It's weird the sort of things I watch, you know, when I watch television, that is. But it was, it was sort of things like that. Uh, time, time patate. Good evening and welcome to the studio. Interesting name. Does it 
have an uh, does it have a any connection with an interesting time yeah i love watching stuff like that <laughs> i was about to say i love i, I love i actually I, I i go on about reality tv shows but to be honest um the ones that watch people doing their work or you know like these people blowing down buildings and things I don't mind I, I find them really fascinating to watch it's the ones like Big Brother which are kind of silly reality TV programs that um, I uh, I really don't like I know people wouldn't watch it, but one of the things I, I used to say to, to Lady Zara was um, I, I wish on things like Big Brother, what they'd do is is sort of say, you know, to the people that go into you know, le if you like the, you know, the idea being that they go in to learn a craft or, you know, I think on, on the very first Big Brother, they had people doing things like spend two days I don't know, learning to sculpt. And then to see who, you know, the, the the best sculpture at the end of it would win the you know, money or chocolate or whatever it was, and that was quite fascinating. And then there's just it again, silly. Uh, and uh, yeah, gold mining program. Yeah, I don't think I've seen any of that one uh, of those. Um, I what I used to like watching the police ones. Um, uh, quite a bit um, and customs those those are the ones I watched a, f a fair amount of um, but uh, just just about just about anything really would you know that I'd be quite happy to watch something like that um, uh, if I came across it in some ways you know it's it would be like learning about gold mining and yet i'm not going to do any gold mining the knowledge is completely useless to me in some ways but it's fascinating all the same yeah i kind of did i probably watched a little bit more of that um than that and then then i gave up i actually liked watching things like the dancing on ice no, I actually don't like Strictly, Strictly Come Dancing is one I never watched didn't like that and I always kind of wished really for uh, for those programs that sort of program instead of um, instead of taking celebrities they should have taken people just off the street if you know what I mean and uh, and, and and done that there was um, I remember there was a series of programs where they did something like that, uh, where they take people from their normal jobs and put them in, you know, put them into another job and then see if experts could tell who the fake was, if you see what I mean. And I can remember watching one which was which was chefs, and they had two, you know. Uh, they, they they took a, a person who basically had his own burger van and they took two uh, two chefs i think one out of college and one out of a you know a michelin starred restaurant not not the chef himself but like a trainee uh, and the idea at the end of the program was that they would enter um a, a sort of a competition shall we say I, I can't remember exactly the details of it and see uh, and then they you know, um, see how they got on in the competition. Uh, the judges didn't know who it was, you know, who was who was who. And at the end of the program, they sort of said to the judges, you know, one of these people, one of these three people is um, is, is a fake in quotes, and um, you know what he does normally in his normal job is he's got his own burger van. And the other two are whatever and uh, i i remember this one because you know i mean the whole program was about him faking it in quotes um but i, I remember this one because 
uh, of course they got it wrong the, the the bloke they picked to win was the fellow with his his burger van and he, he cooked this sort of you know five course meal or whatever it was a really fancy thing uh, and they um, they put the fellow from the from the Michelin starred restaurant I think third and they thought he was the faker <laughs> And I just found it absolutely, that one was just really funny. Um, and they were just absolutely, you know, gobsmacked when they when they were told who it actually was. And they sort of pointed out things like, um, I mean, the, the, the fake bloke, because he was trying to concentrate on so much, he sort of, when they sort of said, can we, can we have a talk with you? He said, hang on a minute, I'm just going to put, you know, put this in and, you know, you'll have to wait. Uh, and of course, they just took that as being sort of an arrogant chef. That's how chefs work, and therefore that was one of the reasons why they they um, thought he was a, a real thing. Oh yes, I remember seeing that great big and great big tr uh, sort of transporter things trundling buildings down the road. Yeah, I saw a few of those. Yeah, you want to move house, literally move house. Um, not quite the same thing, but uh, I've seen them, uh, seen programs in the UK where they've done that with bridges, railway bridges. Picked it up, moved it out of the way, gone and picked up another one and brought it and, and dropped it in. That, the transporter for that would be something I'd really like to model because it's got lots of wheels. <laughs> I love models with lots of wheels and those transporters have got hundreds of wheels uh, actually they there were lots of wasn't one transporter the one I saw with the bridges it was about 50 all linked together but um, uh, no I'm gonna, I don't I don't recall seeing anything like that I mean, I think I think they did a program on things like the SST one, was it the supersonic um, car? Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't actually recall seeing much. Uh, you learn all sorts of fascinating things. Um, one of the things that fascinated me for models, model aircraft, the world speed record for model aircraft, I don't know if it still is, but from the point where I remember this, the world speed record for model aircraft was held by a glider. Forget the jets, petrol driven aircraft, glow pulse jets, glider. Weird and wonderful facts. Does that even work? It kind of makes sense if you think about it. Um, they, if it, with with a powered aircraft like a jet or, or, or a pulse jet, you strap a pulse jet to a brick, it'll fly. Um, it doesn't have to be aerodynamic. As you get to the lower powers, you know, you, you know, um, a turbo. Sorry, um, a, a proper jet engine on a on a model. Again, there's there's an excess of power. The thing will stand on its tail and go vertical. Um, and, and but with a with a glider, a glider flies because it's aerodynamic. Dynamic. It's highly aerodynamic. It's highly slippery in the air. You want this thing to go as far as possible with as much lift as possible gliders if you think about it um, now what they because 
speed records are always done over a horizontal distance. I don't know whether it's quarter of a mile or, a f or quite what, but it's always done over horizontal. It's done both ways. Um, the way the glider built up speed, vertical dive, right, at, virtually a right angle turn, and then straight. Uh, and the the basically as it's coming down, if it's slippery enough, it reaches terminal velocity. Um, and uh, if it's slippery enough, it's gonna go. It's still gonna keep a lot of that speed. So it kind of makes sense. Ray America, good evening and welcome to the stream. Unfortunately, you are just arriving towards the end of it, but um, welcome uh, nonetheless. Since I've been talking for quite a bit and not actually doing stuff, I'm just carrying on for a little bit longer, but. Um, But uh, yeah, it, it, it kind of does. I mean, that's what that's the fascinating thing about the fact it was a glider. It just grabs your attention as, as a glider. Everybody thinks of them as slow and, and ponderous things, but they shift. Um, there's a there's a technique for for model gliders which is called dynamic soaring, and I don't quite understand how it does it. What the physics involved and how it does it, but it it, it basically involves you looping the glider. Um, just behind the ridge of a hill so you catch the back of wind blowing up it and these things um, when the people are flying these things they're looping in, in sort of about two or three feet radius or something like that and, and the thing is flying so fast that it, it's it's actually humming it, it's actually creating sound waves um, and the, I don't know how fast the thing is going but it is the, must, the stresses on the thing must be absolutely amazing and thank you very much, Ray America. That is very kind of you. Uh, effectively, dummy luck, that's correct, yes. Um, I'm not actually, te technically, I'm not actually burning the wood. Um, it's not being oxidised as such, which is what burning would be. It's more akin to cooking it, um, like you cook meat. Uh, and as with meat, which would go brown all that does it for a slightly different reason this is kind of the same thing it goes brown but you are correct it's a heated element um, this one uh, running at about one and a half volts and then probably running about two amps of current through this at the moment so it is it's too hot for me to touch because it's burnt it's I'll say burning wood notwithstanding I'm not actually burning but to color the wood so it's it's running probably about I was going to say in Celsius terms, probably two, 250 degrees, something like that. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, whilst we might have been talking about things in um, along those lines, um, science is, a, is an interest, but I'm not a scientist. No, um, I'm a my training is in telecommunications, um, but um, I am interested in electronics and things like that. So technically, is um, was you know, you're reasonably accurate in that respect. And no. I um, quiz shows are quite um, tend to have quite a characteristic, quite um, uh, I know you get specialist knowledge quizzes, but quite often the sort of general knowledge sorts of quizzes and history I'm not fantastically interested in, and and literature and films don't. So I'm not that good on uh, on quiz shows. Um, they they 
You know, in some ways, the only quiz show I would like to do, I would have liked to do, and and it's only, it's only a particular scenario that interests me. We've got one I don't know if you're in the UK, but there there is one uh, called um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and. Um, uh, basically, if you, if it's not a if it's not a quiz show that you know, um, they ask you a question, but they give you the answer, or they give you four answers of which one is right, and uh, and if you get the right answer, you progress. If you don't get the right answer, that's you're done. You may or may not take home money, um, and for every answer you get right, you you potentially get more money. So the the um, the scenario I'm interested in would be to get to the last question, the one million dollar, one million pound question. Uh, to know what the answer is, but to pretend I don't know and ask the audience, um, and just see what happens. That <laughs> kind of uh, would amuse me. It probably is, but I. Um... Okay. Uh, I don't watch a lot of films, uh, dummy luck. Um, I, I I do remember though that I think I think I, that I've watched it a few times uh, in the UK. I remember once though I uh, the because there was obviously there's not that many one million pound questions, um, but one of them I did know the answer to. The person that was doing it didn't. Um, but I did, and that was what is one followed by a hundred zeros. What do you call that number? I knew the answer to that one. I was rather proud. In fact, a lot of people should know the answer to that one if they know anything about the internet. I wonder if anybody on uh, watching here actually knows the answer. What is one followed by a hundred zeros? No, I didn't see that one. Oh, I tell you what, <laughs> I would not, I would not have wanted, I would not have liked, not that I have children, so, but I would not have liked to have been the father on that question. Um. Or, or uh, I sort of, I almost pray that the father actually knew the answer, because the pressure on that would have been absolutely, um, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, Mastermind used to be quite interesting. You never know, Free. They might have accepted that. What well, the problem they'd have, though, is finding somebody that uh, could compile the questions. Because you know what the 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 questions. Um, you know what they used to do with Mastermind is. Um, you you pick a specialist subject, and they go find a specialist that could compile the questions for them. They didn't. It wasn't an in-house team. And I actually remember. Um, was it? It was, uh, I can't remember what it was now in terms of, but there, were, there was one competitor that was in the show and um, it, it got a, shall we say, an obscure specialist subject. So the team had gone out to find the world expert on this subject to get him to compile questions not realizing that the fellow they wrote to to compile the questions was the fellow that was competing um he was honest otherwise he'd have uh, he could quite easily have submitted all the questions and known the answers but he was honest and told them you probably don't want to ask me that <laughs> oh hey that would have been nice dummy look that would have been nice wouldn't it Hi, Dad. I'm just about to win a million pounds. <laughs> I suppose it saved him the cost of a phone call, didn't it? <laughs> Afterwards. 
Oh, yes, that would have been really good, Demiluk. Yes. Um, it's that that sort of thing I, I do find really uh, amusing. You know, I, I, I sort of could imagine somebody on on who wants to be a millionaire sort of phoning you know, his friend or, or father, or whatever, and going, uh, "No, I just wanted to give you a call. I don't want to actually ask you a question, but since they're paying for the call, I just thought I'd give you a ring and say, "Hello, how are you doing?" <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I shall, uh, I shall try and find it, dummy luck. Thank you. Now then, you see. How many other creative streams do you get? Sort of discussions of um, you know, uh, high speed gliders, uh, millionaire questions, and I'll tell you the answer in a minute, um, and blue dogs. Yeah, blue dogs. No, don't ask me either. Um, I'll, uh, oh, thanks, uh, Demi. Look, I'll take a, take a look. Um, those of you that might not know, one followed by a hundred zeros is called a Google. Which is where the internet search name company name came from, Google. Google, one followed by a hundred notes, the largest known number. Or, or more strictly speaking, I suppose, the largest named number. Um, and if I remember rightly, the reason for choosing it was it, you know, it represents knowledge of everything type of thing. Yep, yeah, you're right, dummy luck. You, uh, I'm guessing you beat me there, but yeah. Did this? Did they spell it incorrectly, or did they actually do it on purpose? I can't actually really remember. I just vaguely sort of, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the la largest known number. Not that you can't get bigger. I mean, two Google, two Googles is bigger than one Google, but the Google is the largest named number. So, yeah. And I always find. Uh, there's certain concepts that blow your mind in a way in um, in mathemat mathematics. Infinity is the largest number. Possible. It's impossible to have something bigger than infinity. So what happens when you add one to it? Uh, Google. Google. <laughs> Google. Yeah. Google. That uh, that would be um, quite that would be an interesting spelling for Halloween uh, Ultimate Tiba. Sounds like something you'd do in the zombie uh, 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 apocalypse. Does that Google Google? Or perhaps something off of um, Ghostbusters. <laughs> no. No, I've not heard uh, that dummy. Dummy. Uh-huh. Well, that's about three times more than me, then. 
I, I, I wonder sometimes. Uh, I, with, I, I don't tend to read headlines and, um, and, and, and newspapers because they just pick up headlines and when you actually read the story behind it, it's usually not worth the effort. Um, but it's interesting. I think um, I, I don't, don't I didn't know about this week, but as there are sort of um, there have been stories about people uh, doing interesting things like that, and, and this thing about interstellar travel and um, uh, apparently uh, and getting somewhere faster than light would um, uh, it keeps popping up from time to time. I'm not saying it hasn't. Um, I mean, any, anybody who can get the their mind around that sort of math uh, mathematics has to be absolutely um, amazing. Yeah, I've got about another five minutes, uh, Fluffy Twiggle. I'm, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time talking rather than uh, than doing pyrography. And it's an interesting discussion, so I'm just going on for it a little bit longer. Uh, okay. It is indeed, yep. <laughs> Oh, I'm not that bad. I mean, at one time I could I could do my 48 times table and my 36 times table, and an 18 times table. Um, and that's because there's 48 cans of cat food in a box, and 36 cans of dog food in a box, and there's 18 cans of uh, I forgot what it was now in a box. Used to work in a supermarket. When you stock taking, you count the boxes and do the multiplications. Yeah. You, you do know that you can count up to a thousand and twenty-four on your toes and No, on your fingers. You add your toes and my brain isn't calculating the maths. Kind of like a party trick is that you use one hand and you can what can you count up to 31 you can count up to 31 on just with just one hand i suppose strictly speaking that's 32 Sort of, depending on whether zero is a number or not. And therefore, can you technically count up to something that isn't a number? Hmm. Cream cake fairy hasn't been around today. I know there are cream cakes though, as well as twiglets and salted peanuts. <laughs> yeah, I can I can remember back in school. Sort of so, some of the maths things are quite you know, elegant. You kind of knew when you got it right because the answer was elegant and um, 
I, I couldn't quite describe what elegant means but it just looked right and um, yeah these days I am just as likely to get a calculator out to, to add two numbers together as I am to actually do it in my head <laughs> actually there is a cream cake as well and there are some chocolate eclairs and there's a cream cake I highly suspect by the end of tonight there will be no cream cake left if indeed there is any now because <laughs> uh, Lady Zara has been out of the room for about an hour Those of you who may have been wondering how you can count up to 31 on your fingers, it's binary. What, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and this is where it gets hard, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, 12, <laughs> 13, 14, 15, 16, and carry on. Uh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, we got two of those as well. Mm. Yeah, two tubs of Pringles. I don't know what they put on them, but you eat a tub of Pringles. Don't matter how big the tub of Pringles is, but the quantity of eating is always a tub. And if I buy Pringles, I, I will buy barbecue beef ones. And if I buy Doritos, I buy the the um, the red ones, the spicy whatever they are, jalapeno peppers or something. Because um, Lady Zara doesn't like spicy foods like that. So if I buy them, I guarantee she doesn't nick them. <laughs> and I get to have them any time I like. I can have a packet open on the desk for days. No, I could have a packet open the desk for days. I don't, but I could. Uh, and they wouldn't go missing. Yeah, spicy Doritos. Mind you, Junior, Junior likes spicy food. Um, if I have a curry um, and you know, there's always sauce left on the plate. Uh, Junior, Junior will he'll be the one that wants to lick the plate clean if you put it down on the floor he'll, he will actually lick the plate clean cats are a weird thing our first two cats um, Mindy and Maui uh, uh, Maui used to love fish from the fish shop and Mindy used to love the batter and they wouldn't eat the other. So Mary would eat the fish, Mindy would eat the batter and they'd share a fish. Junior likes spicy food, yeah. I've never tried that with Judy, probably would. Mind you, I, I suppose if you just licked all your hair clean, you probably might like spicy food as well. Okay, that, that is starting to look like a better shape now for that mane. <laughs> um, I've still got a lot of work to do on that to, 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 uh, to apply the right shading to make it look the right shape. 
but this end now is starting to round backwards uh, whereas before it was kind of looked as though it was stood straight out this area for example still looks like it stood straight out it's flat um, at least now this is starting to curve around the back and there's got to be a bit more bit done around on the top here to give that sort of same sort of impression and then I'll have to move down here and, and just curve it a little bit as well uh, which is done uh, all by uh, by shading um, but I think it is half past. I've gone half an hour longer than I normally do. Um, actually, I've been broadcasting 20 minutes longer than I normally do. So OBS is telling me. Um, but half an hour not past my normal stopping time. You see, there you go, free. When you're not when you're not streaming, I go on a bit longer. So I will turn that off before I forget. Uh, and I have a hot pyro tool hanging around um, they don't, they're not hot enough to actually set fire to anything but they will melt stuff and if you touch them you'll burn yourself and we do have cats coming along here so they are relatively safe things um, even with paper by the way if I touch the if I heat the tools up and touch them to paper it tends to burn it tends to it will burn um, it, it chars all the way through before it sets it on fire um, so they are relatively safe tools from that um, respect. Uh, it is po with one of those. It is possible to heat it up to orange, and therefore it will. If you if you do it right, you can set fire to paper. But um, most of the tools don't really heat up that in that that much enough to cause fire. Uh, anyway, it is the um, it is time for me to stop. Tomorrow we will be continuing with adding just lots more hair. Uh, darkening the hair down so that we get this the correct shapes uh, appearing and adding a little bit more detail like these um, darkening off adding some more of these sort of tufts clumps uh, groups of hair just to give it a little bit more interest around there and and tie things together a little bit more than uh, than it does at the moment just make things like this shadow look like it really is a shadow rather than something weird um so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to say thank you to everybody that's um, been watching tonight and following if there's anybody new into the channel that um, isn't aware that i do have a jewelry shop most of the pictures that you might have been seeing down here for chains jewelry um chains things like this um are actually uh, images from the shop i do make jewelry it's chain mail jewelry um so i do recommend you take a look at but there again i would recommend you take a look it's my shop um proceeds of which help out the uh, the stream buying things like the wood i was showing earlier and and beads and things like that uh, and one of these days i might even get some of the pyrography on there it's just a matter of taking photographs but I'm still missing those two its the round versions I've got plenty of square ones but I don't have the round ones um <laughs> Mubo almost got you there for you there you go those those of you he's obviously listening to me is Mubot. he's uh, he's giving you the link for the shop uh if you're not following me why Anyway, I'll <laughs> tell you our decision. Um, I encourage you to push that button. And thanks very much to those people that have this evening. Uh, so if you don't want to follow me, but you might like to follow me. But this time on Twitter, you'll get a notification then if I go live. Uh, and that's about the only thing I tweet out. Occasionally I'll tweet something else, but not very often. So uh, you're not about to get inundated. And... Um, well, apart from that, I'll be streaming again tomorrow night from approximately 8 p.m. UK time, 20 hundred hours uh, GMT UTC, or about two and a half hours ago. It was eight o'clock here in the UK. I'm just going to say, you know, let us not forget them, and uh, nor should we forget the lessons that um, they fought to. Uh, uh, to teachers 
thanks everybody for watching it has been fantastic look forward to seeing you in the future in the studio and uh, from the uk i'm going to wish you uh, a very good night bye bye